that might not want Abacus to be like that. Um, that's why. Them? That's why. That's why I want to introduce more internal events where you can just kind of sit down, more chill, chat to each other, make new friends. Um, that's what. That's what kind of got me into Abacus in the first place, because I made so many like my good mates through Abacus. Um, so I, I, yeah, so just through more more internal events. But obviously, with with regards to clubbing, like that's 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 going to happen anyway. Um, not not just Abacus. It'll be every every society, um, normal club nights as well, sports night, medic sports night. I know that happens quite a lot. Uh, not a you. Um, so you know, it's it's, it's 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 a common theme. But obviously, if we introduce more internals, if we introduce more like dinner nights, dumpling making, um, maybe like I don't know, paintballing, like, <laughs> we can we can have a nice chat and you know form a, a, a greater bond in the community. Okay, so a specific question about you know events planning. So let's say you're trying to plan the um, fresh dinner. How? What are the main components of the event planning? There? Fresh dinner. What are the main components of planning an event, like, you know, freshest dinner or something? Can you walk me through how you would plan the event? So I think the first thing is to find out how many people are actually interested. Um, because I think with Abacus, um, it's a very, very tight community. But um, I think we should try and I think I think we should change this for next year. Maybe we should, we should find out who's actually interested and then find a location that's suitable for the amount of people that's interested instead of maybe having like, um, you know, find a venue and then trying to fit the Abacus members into the venue. Um, and then obviously when we do find the men venue, I would have to email or contact them in different ways. And then- Where do we host our freshest dinner this year? Uh, Goldmine. Perfect, keep going. Queensway? is that, I don't know. Keep going, keep going. That's yeah, uh, of course I know my stuff, come on. Don't test me. <laughs> That's the whole point, bro. Uh, no, no, so yeah, uh, what, was, what was that? Um, yeah, obviously, I, I would have to um, call, you, you know, the, the events place, the manager, um, tell them how, you know, the capacity, know the capacity, the minimum spend, the maximum spend, um, chat to the treasurer, see how much, you know, how much we can subsidize, see how much um, we can uh, offer off the tickets to. And, and then obviously, when we get all that sorted, then I can, we can, you know, communicate with the secretary, the publicity officer, to get the emails out, to get the WhatsApp messages out, to get the, the Instagram posts out so everyone knows. Okay, so for example, for Chinese restaurants like Goldmine, um, they actually prefer, they only, you know, mainly serve, um, you know, people with Chinese background and stuff. And they often prefer people who speak Chinese to um, make the whole booking process easier. How would you go around that? And would you be able to liaise with them in Chinese? Um, I can, me personally? Yeah. I can speak Mandarin, yeah. Okay, so that's good, that's good. Um, so, <laughs> so, hmm? okay. also, uh, I'll, I'll, I can also include like my parents' own takeaways, so I know how to deal with, you know, kind of that kind of, kind of side. <clears throat> so, uh, another sp specific situation here. So, um, I'm taking this um, example from our Christmas dinner. So uh, Christmas dinner is actually traditionally quite an expensive event, especially for an internal, you know, a, a dinner event. So um, we often subsidize our, take, our, our members' tickets quite a lot. So uh, let's say between unis, we have um, agreed to sell our tickets at 20 pounds per person. But at the end, we're subsidizing an additional amount of £10. So that reduces the overall price to, you know, £10 per person for uh, Imperial members, Abacus members. And another um, VP from another uni approaches you and say, um, we do not like the price that you're selling at. It looks like you're undercutting our price and it puts a bad name on our society. And they would want you to uh, either, you know, uh, raise the price, price back to £20 for our members or they will back out of the event. So what would you do in that case? Um, I think the first um, option, the first way of going about it is definitely talking to the president, talking to the treasurer, um, see why we can, you know, why we're undercutting so much, see why we can offer it at ten pound, uh, ten pounds instead of twenty pounds. Uh, um, if we if we have the ability to actually subsidise it to ten pounds, then I think why not? You know, the the, the best interest should be our abacus members. It shouldn't really be um, different abacus societies. That, that doesn't, you know, that, that, that's, that's the last priority. Our first priority should be our members. Um, so I'll definitely, you know, talk to the president. I'll talk to the, the, the treasurer. Um, and if we're able to provide that, then sure. Um, but if other unis are, are you know, um, dissatisfied, then we can, we can try and find a solution to them, with them. 
um, if they don't agree with us. If, if they can't bring the price down as well, then at the end of the day, that's their problem, not really ours. Uh, if we're able to give that price, then let's do it. Why not? That means we have to pay more, though. What, what would you Sorry? do? That means we have to pay more from what you answered just now. So how we don't want to do that. Well, if, if we don't want to pay more. Lose more money because we're subsidizing. Still pay because it's still the, but we've made a contract with the restaurant, so there's a set amount I could pay. But now oh. there's going to be. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think that depends on uh, the timing and when they back out. If LSE back out, you know, um, in the very beginning, it depends on the contract. The what day I'm before thinking. the event. The day before the event. If it's the day before the event, then I'm assuming they've already paid for it now. They've no, but collected. then they have to. We have to cover their tickets as well, and overall. Would would LSE would LSE not have already taken the money in from their students? No, because uh, the way it's planned is usually um, one uni organizes and they buy all the places and tickets, and they redistribute out uh, to the other unis. So if LSE suddenly decides that they're not going to go forward with the event, they won't pay anything towards. Uh, the, the uni that organized it or the other unis that are buying stuff, buying the tickets. So you never know how, whether you're able to absorb all the surplus tickets or not. So that is actually quite a huge risk financially for us sometimes. Okay. Um, um, I think, go, go, go for it. Um, I think, I think the first, the first thing is definitely to talk to the uni and why, why they're dropping out, why they're dropping it so, so, uh, you know, so late to the game, but also I feel like there should also be terms in the contract where about dropping out. Um, that we could include, include in there to prevent it from happening first. But if it does happen, um, then I think uh, definitely we have to talk to the treasurer, definitely have to talk to the president um, and the, the restaurant as well to see what we can do. Um, uh, if, we're, if, if we're able to communicate terms with the restaurant and, you know, not, you know, uh, have a proper reasoning with them, you know, because it, it, is, it is, okay, if, if, we've, if we planned it, um, and they dropped out. It's kind of not not really our fault. So we should definitely try and communicate with the restaurant um, and see what they say. But I think the worst case scenario would be telling other unis that they might have to bump up the prices a little bit. Yep, that might that's, be that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I think that that doesn't happen that often, but just keep in mind it might happen. Um, another uh, situational uh, question. So let's say you're in a club, ten ten, and your president actually blacks out, and um, you haven't hit min spend, and he's just lying on the floor, and there uh, also quite a few other members from Imperial chundering all over the place. What would you do? Um, I think the first priority. And what are your priorities actually? Yeah, definitely. The first priority is make sure they're safe. Uh, make sure Arbacus members are safe. Make sure the president, who's you know arguably in charge of everything, making sure he's all right. Um, if he needs to be taken back, then you know it's a bit embarrassing, but you know it's got to be done. Uh, we have to take him out and you know send him, send him home, perhaps. And obviously, I would, I would, I would, I would have trust my other committee members to look after the other imperial students who are also gendering. Um, and making sure they're safe, they're safe first. So that's the first priority. Second priority, I think, if I'm in a good state, uh, um, I would definitely have to step up as and take over as the president's role, making sure everything is kind of sorted all right, making sure the minimum spend is, is hit, and also obviously, um, hopefully, hopefully, my other committee members are also you know in a good state. So I'll, I'll you know I'll kind of divert jobs to them as well, making sure everything's all right, the minimum spend is hit, um, other people are, are safe as well, that kind of thing. Okay, so one last situational question, and then we'll perhaps move to the some um, some of our people uh, our members who are on the team's call that would like to ask you. So um, let's say we have 100 people turning up to our freshers dinner and suddenly uh, everyone's seated, but then five um, freshers, kind of clueless freshers, turn up and say, oh, they want to be included in the dinner, but they haven't paid, but they're willing to pay, uh, pay you know, uh, at the restaurant um, immediately. So what would you do? I think that first depends on the capacity. If the capacity of the restaurant's full, then we have no chance, no choice but turn them away. But obviously, if they're willing to pay and you know they're coming into the restaurant, they're willing to pay. Now we could definitely talk to the restaurant owner and the space as well with the space. We could definitely talk to the restaurant owner and um, you know figure figure out like a, a, a maybe ex, you know a separate contract. Um, 
I mean, I feel like restaurant owners will be very happy to take them take our money. So I don't think it should be too big of a deal. Okay, perfect. So uh, I think that's it from me. Uh, do you have any? I'm wondering. Uh, there's no teams question. So perfect. We're done. Thank you. Hey. As you can see, I'm Leon and I'm running for president next year. So I'm a first year design engineering student. Um, a bit about my background, I'm Chinese. I was born and raised in London. And with the vast diversity that London has, I've always found myself making lots of friends with people of all backgrounds from all over the world. And as a result, I've been sort of whitewashed. So I can't really speak Mandarin fluently, which is quite unfortunate, but I'm trying to learn since I'm still in love with my Chinese heritage. Um, and yeah, I've, I always seem to find a greater sense of community and comfort with other Asians due to our similarities. So at the start of the year, I was trying to find a community that I could fit well to. I was searching through many different societies and joined pretty much any that caught my attention. Now after months at Imperial, although I haven't ha found the time for other societies anymore, this is the remaining society that I can say that I'm definitely a part of. Initially, I thought Abacus was just going to be a group of British Asians because, um, yeah, that's also what caught my attention because obviously I fit right in that group. And, yeah, you know, Abacus stands for the Association of British and Chinese University Students. So that's also what, why I thought it would just be British Asians. Um, but the aim of the society is to bring Chinese culture to our attention. Um, however, after being a member of the society for this long, I can now say that it's a society that brings to, that welcomes people from all backgrounds. This society brings together people from all over Asia and even from other parts of the world into one friendly and positive community. I've had amazing experiences from all of these events and I'll be extremely grateful to carry on as a president um, next year. As someone who's been to nearly every Abacus event, whether it's clubbing, dinners, karaoke, sports, and even regularly with my Abacus families, I think this shows my enthusiasm and passion towards this society. I think I'm suitable to take the role of this president as I have the qualities, as I believe that I have the qualities that the president should have. To start off, leadership. I've always been up to take the leadership role in group projects, and I've always been consistently feeding back useful and relevant information to all of my, um, to the rest of the group, and also making sure that everyone fulfills their roles um, to their, to their needs. I will be a president that will work well with all of their peers, especially since many people running for community um, that are currently running for committee are my friends who, are all, um, who I already talk to regularly. Um, and together we have great hopeful plans for the future of Abacus. Furthermore, my first impression of Luca was a very friendly and hardworking president, as I first really knew about him through my neighbour, who's also my good friend. Um, so, after 10.10, my neighbour decided to keep a lost wallet that he found on the floor during the event. Um, he tried contacting many people, including the uni of the wallet's owner. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it was Luca who took up the role and went out of his way to personally visit my neighbour to sort the situation out. My neighbour was already so amazed at how great of a president Luca was. And this is the type of first impression that I would love to make to the freshers. 
and I believe that also have these qualities of being friendly and hardworking. Finally, I'm great at taking care of people, especially drunk people. I won't say too much on this, but both my abacus parents know a lot about this. As a president, I'll work together with the rest of the community and other unis to plan more events that the members would love. For example, with enough planning and hard work, I believe something like a talent show could be possible. In terms of changes, um, there could be more organised priests. Um, obviously, as said before, this year there weren't as many organised priests as there could have been. Um, I really liked the ones as, um, for 1010 because that allowed us to get to know each other. But after that, it ultimately depended on what family you're in. Um, thankfully, I got put in a great family who always organised great things for us. Um, but I found a lot of people asking, like, when's the next priest? When's this? When's that? and I had to be the one inviting them. So there's been a lot of like left out people from the pre's and pre's are just as important as the actual event uh, socializing. Uh, yeah, so to round everything off, I believe that I would suit the president role perfectly, especially with my great aspirations and passion for the society. I've, been, I've really enjoyed being part of the society as it has given me something to look forward to outside of my studies. Thank you. Um, okay, so ICL, KCL, UCL, LSC, then you have the four Goldsmith, Brunel, um, SOAS, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, did I say Brunel? Oh, Queen Mary's the last one. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so the role, of the, the ultimate role of the president is being in charge of external events, so communicating with other unis, um, planning all of these great events. Um, so these external events like 1010, the boat party. Um, another important role is keeping all of the other members in check. Um, but obviously, as a community group, we're all working together. It's not like I'm in charge of you, you do this. We're all working together as one, so we all feedback from each other. Um, another thing is taking care of everyone, both inside and outside of events. So like ticket collections, um, lost property, and inside clubs, maybe if someone's too drunk, make sure that you take care of them, make sure everyone's safe. Um, well, obviously I really, this is like my favorite society and I have like really great aspirations for this. So I have lots of plans for the future of this. And I think as president, it really allows me to work with other unis to plan these like large events. Um, so like I can work on a great scale um, compared to other positions like vice president. So vice president is more internal, so imperial only, but I would like to venture out. Hmm. Abacus organized clubbing events. Oh, um, so ten ten, not Halloween. Well, that's BK. There's boat party, winter ball. Chinese New Year, Asian Glow. Um, is there more? Oh, the next one. <laughs> the end of the year, yeah. Um, Nebula and Halloween, obviously. Okay. Um, 
Um, well, if this is like, if the deadline is about an event, um, I think what's most important is keeping the event going because 300 pounds compared to like the actual how much money we spend on a lot of other things, it's quite, I think, minimal. So something like this, we could take something out of our own budget if like I discussed with the treasurer um, to cover for the event first um, before going with, uh, before trying to contact the uni. So there's, if you say like there's trouble contacting the uni, so like no one's responding, is that basically what's happening? Vice president, so you could contact other members, try to get um, them to contact them instead. Yeah. Um, well, to me, well, it's like a community that makes me feel really welcomed. Um, it's also like an escape from my studies. So it's, as I said before, it's something that I always look forward to outside of my studies. So let's say I have an exam, coursework. Um, most of the time I drop that just to go to Apex events. Um, what was the second question? Um, the main audience is freshers looking for some place to fit into. So, yeah. It's Mike. How is? Hello? Oh, is he muted? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's yeah, not the scenario. So, let's say it's 1 a.m. and you haven't have hit minimum spend, and there's a pressure to black on the Or do you do it? Uh, what do you say happened? So, there's a pressure who's drunk. Really, really drunk, blackout drunk. What do you do? Um, well, what I would do um, is take them. Um, well, if they're lying on the floor, they can't really move them. So, they can't really move them out of the club at the moment. So, take them out somewhere open and safe inside the club. Um, try to get them let's say, to a smoking area. Um, take care of them, obviously, give them water, um, give them like things they need, so like bin to vomit in, things like that. Um, once they're feeling a bit better, um, we need to make sure that they get home safe. Um, obviously, this is like taking this consideration, consideration that um, they're actually not like dying, so we need to check like their pulse and everything. But yes, yeah, so uh, would you have would you have time to do that? So in this question. So you haven't hit minimum spend, and you're probably busy. So do you have time to do that? Um, you haven't hit minimum spend. Well, I think well, the most important thing is obviously safety of our members. Um, anything like budgeting, anything like financial problems that could come next because at this point, it's like someone's life is on the line. So it's most important that we help them first. All right, cool. Um, so just one more question. So you're preparing for a clubbing event. You have the club. And then you found that the menu bottle prices are way too expensive. So what would you do about that? Because obviously um, VIP tables are a very big part of spending. And if they're not willing to spend that much on the bottle prices, so what would you do about that? Um, well, the main thing is talking with the treasurer and the committee of other unis, um, figuring out a plan of action that we could take since well, you said, I think you said that it's close to the event, so it's hard to back out this event. Um, but if we talk with the treasurer, we could try to make something happen to let this event continue since we can't really like, back out last minute. It would be really unfair on like other unis and all the members that paid for a ticket. So the most important thing is trying to get 
the event to continue while keep while keeping Abacus afloat and not dying. Um, so what would you what would your approach be though? So you're gonna talk to your treasurer. So bottles are too expensive. Um, it's committee tables, but also the member tables as well. So what would your approach be? Um, so is there a minimum spend? Because like, are we required to buy loans? Um, yeah, so you have a minimum spend with all events. Um, but if the prices are too, like prices are too high for bottles, then no one like no member tables are gonna want to get a table because the bottles are expensive, right? Yeah. And then it's gonna be a challenge to hit minimum spend. So what would you do in that situation? I mean, like we could organize something out. Like hopefully the other committee will be with me, like trying to take a little money out of our own pocket as well to make this as fun as possible, um, to make this an event that everyone remembers as fun and not a mess. So yeah, so, I need to subsidize a bit. Oh, so your approach would be to just subsidize the bottle prices and your charge members less, and then you take out the cost of them. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's what sense. Would there not be room to sort of negotiate with the club to lower prices a bit or? Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's one thing I missed out. So obviously one thing we could, the first thing we could do is try and negotiate the prices. Uh, yeah, so obviously the first thing we should be doing is negotiating with the club to try and decrease the prices. But ultimately, ultimately if that's not possible, the next things are what we'd have to do. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Um, ministry. It's always before this year. Um, before this year, I'm not too sure. I don't know. Oh, okay. So do you know why you changed? Um, well, from what I've seen, they've got some bad reviews. Is that why? Oh. Okay, I didn't know about that. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, so we need to prevent people from getting too drunk. So, how are you um, yeah, so what we need to do. So like, as a regular thing in Abacus is like, laying everyone, um, like feeding everyone alcohol, like, you know, with the uh, tables, like, skying everyone alcohol. Um, Obviously, we want to be a lot more careful with that. So, watch out for people who may be showing like signs of being too drunk. Um, we could take care and like letting these people outside to, um, for air um, if they seem too drunk. Um, yeah, so mainly just like preventing people from getting too drunk by. Just giving them less alcohol, giving them um, their own space, not just going too hard on the whole event. Yeah. Mm. Is it? Piccadilly Institute again? Or is it actually ministry? 
Cafe de Coro. Um, so it's actually closed. Okay. Uh, that's Mm. Yeah. So, it's not that it's closed because it's closed. But another thing is just like, think about if I need more. Mm. Okay, yeah. Um, have you heard about the Um, I mean, obviously with the clubbing, there's the drinking parts, so like inevitable. We can't really stop people from drinking um, if it's clubbing. Um, I mean, as part of my manifesto is just me being transparent about myself because everyone else like writing something for me, I wanted to be a bit different. Um, but if we're talking about abacus, the main thing, the main aim of abacus was to bring Chinese culture to our attention. Um, so this is the type of thing that we want to portray to others. Um, so as like the other people have said, through different events um, that are more wholesome, so like um, their dumpling making, um, like cooking tutorials, things like that. Um, and even external events, we could host more events that sort of show like how great everyone is. So what I'm trying to get is like a talent show. Um, so like sh um, allowing everyone to show what they can do um, as freshers, like what they bring to the club and uh, the society and everything. Um, so we need to spend 5k more, um, otherwise like bad relations, things like that could happen. Um, well, I mean, we need to talk with, we need to talk with a bunch of people. So obviously like the club negotiate things and the other thing is talking with our treasurer. So what he could, what, um, the abacus budget could do um, and also with other unis committees as well so their treasurer like what they can offer to this if there's like no way we can um, no way we can, can negotiate any prices um, yeah and we could let's say um, yeah that's pretty much it Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, mm. Yeah. Um, well, obviously we, we need to, the main thing is like talking with both of them, um, letting them know that Abacus, um, that you've sort of chosen these roles uh, in the Abacus committee, so you shouldn't be like ruining the society just because you have bad relations, things like that. Um, 
so by talking out with them, it might help them solve their bad blood again. But if that's not possible, we might need to like fill in for different positions, um, like overwork ourselves a bit um, to make sure that everything goes as planned in the society. Um, well, everyone that's like here today should be here because they want to fulfill the role. Um, but um, the first thing that we need to do is actually like tell them straight up about what's what's going on. What like what? Why are you doing this? Um, because it might be, let's say, they're having problems of their own, like personal problems, personal problems of their own. So, if that's the case, we could get someone else to fill in, um, like ask other maybe possible candidates from last time um, if they want to take up the role again. Um, so, like talking with the current committee, the current, uh, the current person that wasn't pulling the weight, if they would rather. Uh, pull out from the role if it comes down to that. Um, well, in this case, it's like if there's nothing that we can do about the prices, um, but obviously the first thing, once again, is always negotiation, talking, this, that, but if it comes down to it, um, we'd have to let them know it's like there's nothing we can really do about it. Um, if possible, like once again, talking with the treasurer, if it's possible to lend some of our budget to it um, to try to subsidize a little more. But at the end of the day, with external events, it's a lot harder to subsidize compared to you know, internal events. So the like members in the society would need to understand um, understand like the restraints on the pricing. But the thing is, um, I've noticed like even though Apex is quite an expensive society, a lot of people still go to these events because at the end of the day, it's like it's an escape from the studies. It's fun. It's a good community that everyone wants to join. Um, so a lot of time I see people buying these tickets anyway, regardless of the prices. <laughs> um, well, it's like, it's like a double-edged sword, so of course on one side, I can't drink much. If I drink a lot, I'll black out, I'll, I won't be able to do the roles that the president needs to do, and the vice president will need to fill in for me. But the good thing is that if I drink less, that means that there's more drinks for other people, so less spent on me and more spent on others. wrong decisions. Um, well, usually in clubs, I'm always with other people. So um, I'm always like, I'm always making sure that they take care of me. I take care of them. It's like a buddy buddy process going on. Um, favorite what? Oh. Um, <clears throat> To be honest, anything, anything with like families has like 
like captured me um, because it's something really wholesome. Um, it's like giving me a lot of new friends at this uni. Um, they always plan some plan great things like dinners. They're always organizing priests for us. So that's something I'm really grateful for this year. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Oh. Wow. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Katrina, and I'll be running for president um, for the upcoming academic academic year. Abacus has been an invaluable part of my first year university experience, and I'm very, very thankful to be part of this very fun, welcoming, welcoming family. And I, as president, I by running. By running for president, um, I wish to give back um, the, the same kind of friendliness, friendliness to our community. Um, as president, not only do I hope to be an effective leader of the society, I also hope to be an approachable and welcoming member of our society. Someone who actually truly values everyone's opinion and will address any concerns if there were any. Um, having, having, having a strong Chinese and Hong Kong background and having both lived in China and Hong Kong and being able to speak Mandarin and Cantonese fluently, um, I think I will be suitable um, as someone who can bring together students with similar Asian backgrounds. Um, on top of that, I've always, I've always studied at an international school and I have previously had um, leadership positions. So I think I would know exactly how to kind of like communicate and get people to work together and all that. Um, moving forward to next year, I definitely hope to keep Abacus's clubbing reputation and keep Abacus from being known, from being the clubbing, clubbing society um, from, as you know, LKF, Lan Kwai Fong in Hong Kong to London clubs. I do like adore uh, fun, eventful, light life um, clubbing events. And I have shown this um, by attending pretty much all, pretty much, wait, like all Abacus clubbing events apart from one. My aim for next year is to make Abacus clubbing events even bigger, more accessible, and more welcoming, welcoming for all. Um, personally, I, I've thought about introducing a wider range of clubs. Um, so this include perhaps more, if the budget allows, more high-end Mayfair clubs or bigger clubs in general to accommodate for more as tickets, the number of tickets has always been a problem. Um, uh, a small point that um, I think could actually make a significant difference would be perhaps we can introduce some kind of like little voting system to queue up music, if you know what I mean, and have like make sure the DJ plays a few songs that pretty much we all know and we've voted for and kind of have like a little poll system, formal, informal, if it has to go through email, it could go through email, it could go through like our social media accounts and kind of just have a few of our favorite songs like guaranteed, um, guaranteed to be played that night. Uh, aside from all the clubbing, 
uh, clubbing ideas I've talked about. Um, I also aim to make Abacus uh, known to be more than just a clubbing society. I want it to be a wholesome society where we bring people of similar culture together um, and to like kind of further enhance this close knit environment that we're already part of. Um, some ideas I've also I've thought about could be for Chinese New Year, we can have like a calligraphy competition, which could be very easily carried out, very easily implemented. Um, on top of the dumplings we already have, we could have like a tong yun, like a soup ball kind of making. Um, perhaps like a games night that can include mahjong, Chinese chess, a culture quiz, all that jazz. Um, Another some easy events, some some easy events we could easy, we could also implement would be like an Asian movie, Chinese movie marathon where we just watch movies, um, or like how other societies have this like bar hopping, um, uh, they have this bar hopping pub crawl thing. We can do like a little bubble tea hopping. takes takes on the same idea, but instead just kind of like add our kind of little twist to it. Um, um, while, of course, uh, we ho all hope that the running of society goes well and events can run smoothly, it is inevitable that difficulties may arise. Um, I will try my best to I'll try my best to resolve any situations and remain calm under stress and deal with them kind of um, fairly and f with fairly. Um, I believe that I am very responsible, organized and and approachable. Um, I do think I am well suited for the role of president. Um, um, I cannot be more excited to continue um, this year's committee's legacy, success, and achievements um, to end and in line with my manifesto. Together, let's do this. Let's make Abacus an absolute blast. Thank you. What does Abacus stand for? Um, the Association of British and Chinese University Students. <laughs> We've gone through that seven times already with the PO. There are eight universities. Do you want me to go through them? <laughs> eight university. So I don't know this. Brunel, Goldsmith, uh, SOAS, UCL, LSE, Kings, Imperial. Oh no, I'm missing one. Um, wait. Queen Mary. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, um, advocacy is a mixture of both external and internal events. Um, as both president and VP, president and VP um, our positions are supposed to work together. It might be, I guess, my idea to start off with, but if the VP agrees with it, likes it, the VP can continue, uh, I, I will happily give over this role to the VP and the VP can actually implement, implement it, um, get the logis logistics to work out. So I think the role of the VP and the president does not have to be like kind of split like 50-50, if you know what I mean. I kind of want it to be balanced, merged, and yeah. Mm -hmm. With another university. Mm-hmm. 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 
Hopefully, let's hope that never happens because or else that president is just really not responsible. And I hope no president is like that at any societies, at any universities. But if it was to be like that, we you just say it was just the president. So I guess my first resource, well, obviously my first resource will be um, kind of changing my method of communication. So for instance, if I texted them, I would email them, um, call them, WhatsApp them through all the, my how, however I can, however like way, many ways I have to contact them. And then I would contact the other committee members. So in this case, the VP, the treasurer, the secretary, and so on, so on. And if, if no one replies back, which I believe that's seven positions, so seven people just went missing, I could pretty much call the police. But hopefully that is not the case. Hopefully seven of them, one of them will reply. And I hope that they will be able to contact the, contact the president. And if not, perhaps I can talk with them and kind of they can fill in the position of the president and we move forward from there. Seven of them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Can I suggest perhaps make the, making this like not a collab event? Because if that if that, in that scenario that if they just want to drop out like that, just disappear in thin air, I guess I'm just gonna have to. They, I promote I promote it for nothing, and I would at the end of the day, like I mean after the event, I would want to like get some kind of explanation, some, some kind of like financial um, refund because they were the one that went missing. They were the one that dropped, bailed out of the plan. So that's what I would want afterwards. But in that current setting, before the event actually happens, I think my only way forward is still to continue the event. I would not want to cancel the event on behalf of another university, another president. I would absorb those 300 pounds and um, kind of increase the number of number of spaces we have and give that to our own students, our own members, especially considering the recent increase in our own abacus members. It went from like 100 something to like 400. I believe we have more more than enough people to kind of give the tickets to. Um, and so in general, I, yeah, in general, I think my main responsibility would be kind of working, talking with, um, other presidents of other abacus universities. Um, it would also be to, an important one would be kind of to, um, deal with the relationship, the position, the, the jobs of each, each member within the committee. And finally, it's just to kind of fill in any any missing jobs, anything that has is not completed. I would just have to, I would just have to be there to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so not ten ten then. Oh yes, ten ten. Oh, I thought ten ten was organized by like Playcorn or something. Oh, uh, sorry. So ten ten. Um, in order. A ten ten. Um, the Halloween one, which I did not go to. I believe that would be the next one. Oh, I didn't go to that. Anyways, um, Winter Ball, Chinese New Year, Asian Glow. I'm just looking for like little like nods that here and there. <laughs> Asian glow. Um, oh, end of year. Yeah. The PK Nebula. Um, oh, Halloween.
let's say you're hosting um, an event, and you're the main host of the event, so you're the organizer. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you do it in the room, so let's say you're speaking out. Mm-hmm. How would you go about that event? Can I ask what event? Clubbing event or uh, a clubbing yeah. event? When do I start and how do I go about it? Um, well, first of all, I would say if I'm the only one organizing, so no committee members with me. Are we talking about us together? Okay, okay. Um, first of all, give myself plenty of time. Um, don't rush it. Don't make it last minute. I think the most important thing would be venue, 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 cost, cost, cost. So we need a uh, kind of somewhere. How much time would I give myself? I say if I'm the only one with such a small committee and so few people organizing it, I would like to give myself more than like four weeks, so a month. More, yeah, so let's up that to like eight weeks, two months. Um, sort out the venue, I guess when the venue is sorted out, we kind of pause the whole like organizing process if like we, we have exams whatever but if we just need to find a venue that can um kind of allow as as many people as we want however many people we want and will fit within our budget we have to do the calculation ourselves and see how much after all the division if people are willing to pay for those tickets if it will be good the dj um and then after that we have the small small like little little things like writing out emails, telling people when it is, print, printing tickets, making like um, posters, posting on social media, um, and kind of just final things like giving out tickets and for at the actual event to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes a good contract? Um, I think we first have to, I think me and the treasurer or my, myself, we have to make sure we actually, this person is reliable. Like we can't be paying a bit higher, but it has to be guaranteed. We don't want a last minute kind of drop out. I actually, I have not signed a clubbing contract in my life, but I have not asked Luca about it before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a min spend for like the whole night. So I'm assuming, um, so if I do the calculation, like a min spend for a table is like 300, 500, 700, depending on how many drinks you order. Am I right in guessing that? Like per table, let's say 500 is a nicer number. We have like 10 tables that will bring us to um, 5,000. And I'm assuming we're also counting like bars and the different because the, at ministry 1010 there are so many so many bars mm, 500 5000 i believe it will pretty much have to be like 1.5 of the whole table spend so it'll be like 1.25 uh 5k plus 5k plus another like 2.5k Um, I can just round it to about like twelve point five k. Um, oh, fair, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 1 a.m. and you guys haven't, you guys haven't hit mid to 
there's a pressure, there's like blackout drum that's lying on the floor. You have a hitman's friend, there's a blackout drum pressure. What do you do? Um, we have a hit min spend. Um, I guess obviously take care of the pressure. By not taking care of the pressure, I will not suddenly hit min spend. I mean, <laughs> so unless I'm like a pound away or something, I guess I, my for pro first priority is take care of this this living like this human being. I mean, we need to make sure he's safe. Uh, he or she is safe. Um, bring him to the sick bay, the drunk area, whatever that area is. And then at that area, make make sure try to like call up his his or her her friends, and get them over. Um, the sick bay usually has water. People there, are people there like um, bouncers, whatever. Um, there's they usually provide water, and then and then perhaps if just make sure, leave leave him there for a bit, and then come back. Make sure he has friends who will bring him home. No no or knows where he lives and can bring him home. Yeah. And when you haven't hit min spend, there's like two hours to go. How do you go about trying to hit it? And I can take an external clock in your If I still have not hit min spend, how do I hit min spend? Um, I think first, with, with in mind, make sure don't get people to like, to overly drunk, you know, we still need to somewhat care about our liver. Um, but in that case, kind of kind of encourage people to buy more drinks, perhaps talk to the treasurer, get the treasurer to the treasurer and myself or anyone on the committee to perhaps like get people a round of drinks and perhaps they will do the same and get like that's usually usually what happens at clubs. Um, you buy people around, they buy you around back, or something something along the lines of that. And then, yeah, um, socialize more, kind of get people to, like, go to the bar. Um, let them sober up quickly. The, the more sober they are, the more drinks they will buy. <laughs> Give them more water. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the bar prices are way too much, um. And the table, the table bookers no longer want to. Oh, the bar. So with so with the table prices, are no like the table bar prices are no longer reasonable. Um. First of all, talk to the people that booked the uh, book the tables like look look this is a, these are the new prices um I've really tried negotiating with the club I can't or well first of all negotiate with the club tell them like oh previously they have not made it this price why is it this year that this is this price well, why did we increase it by this much um we're still students this is so unfair all that all, all, all that you know little like the little like little blah 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 talks and then if they're unwilling to like budge I mean what can you do you have to go to the your customers which will be your which will be the table bookers you have to tell them oh the club will not budge um look the prices are now this um I mean try not ask them like would you still want the table because we still want the tables booked perhaps just tell them like allow more what do you call it like more people on a table so more yeah yeah you can bring more t people in so perhaps if some tables they like to rather than one person buys the whole buys the whole table out you can get them to divide it into like divide it by more like more people so you can overall like they pay like each person pays less so because there's more to divide by so hopefully that will even out the price then will still be the same as what it was before the the inflation of the drinks Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if my vice president and my treasurer was like, I guess, in more casual terms, 
um, they're beefing. Um, I think on part, especially if they were beefing over work, work to do with abacus, I will feel like that is almost, that has some part of it will have something to do with me. That, that does mean my poor kind of management and my poor division of labor will cause all this, like, them to beef over, like, oh, they don't know, they don't know how, what role, what, what, what their job is. Um, but in that scenario, I think I have to, before that happens, I, I will try and kind of make sure everyone knows their, their position, knows what they have to do to prevent any beefing. But if there was, and it is to the point that I will still talk to them, try to like, oh, maybe you guys will still be like friends. And if they really reach the point where they cannot be friends, I believe we're still a, we're still professional people. We're still part of a society. Um, I mean, they can still work professionally together. They can still be, they can still be civil people, I guess. Um, yes, they might like hate each other deep, deep down. They might like um, talk dirty afterwards. But I really do hope in that, like when they enter the room, when we sit down for a meeting, they will still be able to get get get, get on with their work and really just do it. And I will just try to like make sure they don't see each other or perhaps don't work on the same tasks. Yeah, to prevent. Yeah. Um, if they well, remind them, give them warnings, kind of just like friendly reminders here and there, like, come on, mate, do your job. <laughs> There's this, this for you to do. This is not much. Perhaps just um, in the meeting, the bigger like committee meetings, get everyone to kind of like say a little bit like, oh, I think this job has been kind of like overdue for one month, two months, however months. Um, really just like, come on, get a grip, um, do it. And hopefully this committee member will kind of realize their fault and do it. And if they're not doing it because they're going out to like clubbing events and therefore they don't have time to do it, that would just be a little, that would just be a pity. Like I can, I hopefully as a committee, we would agree like, oh no, maybe tonight's not the night for you to go out, get your job done. And then we could all go out and have fun together as a committee, as an advocate society. Um, but yeah, that if not, and if they do get the work done before the event, yeah, we can all go out and have fun and have a great time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, of course, ask, ask what's happening and kind of resolve the, that issue first before implementing anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> um. Wow. So I basically like the biggest event is not happening. Um, so I'm assuming this is like closer to the 10 10 date, and I'm like, wow, I, I have too late to do anything, too late to actually like anything. Okay, well, first of all, I'm just gonna have to give my reason. Hopefully, I do have a somewhat okay reason to explain to my committee members kind of just tell them oh be genuine um be honest like tell them my reason tell them my reason and i mean this does deserve an apology i would have to apologize to the to the greater like not just my committee the whole the whole abacus like society like yes i know this is a big a big 1010 a big 1010 event it has been a, a pretty much a legacy event 
um i have not been i have not been able to plan it um i have not been able to plan it do my job um i think my way of like kind of saying being saying i'm sorry in the future will perhaps like i guess plan something else um like not a replacement as a 1010 but perhaps something as big maybe not as um not rather than a legacy a memorable event but a similar a similar event that will um that will be somewhat like 1010 therefore that for people to attend maybe starting from the day i messed up um so two months later hopefully i get that plan i get that event sorted so people will not be as frustrated yeah but <laughs> um my tolerance back in summer was like peak it was so good <laughs> like i used to like drink every day it was just like it just got better and better and better no no, no. It, just, it just got better and better and better like i could i used to like mix wine with other like i used to mix wine in because wine would never get why would never like mixing wine into my drinks will never will never get me drunk because I'm, I'm just really tall i have a high tolerance with wine and others didn't so when you mix like wine and vodka and champagne like they would be they would be gone immediately but i used to never have that problem so i used to put wine in the in the equation so that's my quickest way of of pretty much like screwing other people over but then somehow I think there was a period where I came to London and I realized there was something called like a pre culture where you have to pretty much get drunk for the sake of going out and like going to like, you have to get like to a certain level of tipsiness to go out. So like that was kind of getting drunk in a short amount of time. And usually at first I realized like I would drink at the same time as people, but I would get drunk like when we leave the club or like when we're about to leave the club. So I'll be like, really hyper and everything by myself and everyone's like guys we're going home but i think my tolerance has definitely gone down in the i don't do i don't drink soju but units wise was that really offensive um units wise i think like currently like five to ten units Baka shots units, yeah, like a pretty average tolerance level right now. Mm -hmm. Abba member. Oh, memory magic. That scared me. I thought you wanted me to like say someone in the committee. Um, my favorite Abba memory. Mm. I don't know. I feel like Chinese New Year. What Chinese New Year was good. Egg was good. Um, I really like the freshers, the freshers dinner, um, cause that was quite early on. That was the first time I had like home food in a long while. Cause I just did Western food for a long bit. And that was like the first time I actually had some good, decent, um, good, um, well, well-priced, um, Asian food. So I was very happy about that. I got to meet like more people. Finally realized Abacus was more of a wholesome community rather than just a fully clubbing community. It was just, yeah, nice meeting people. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you.